Father, as we light our candle this morning, we come to remember 2,000 years ago when light came into darkness, when the light of the world came for us. We thank you for this Christmas season. We thank you for this time to sing and to enjoy together and to praise the Saviour. And we pray this all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we're going to begin by singing together once in Royal David's City. Let's stand and let's sing together. <coughs> We're going to have our Bible reading now. Uh, Hugh Treasure is going to come up and read from Luke chapter 2 and verses 8 to 20. So, Hugh. Morning, everyone. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace on the, to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
Well, it's my privilege now to introduce our uh, speaker properly. Di uh, Woolridge is a wordsmith, uh, so I try to make up a wordsmithy kind of in, in, in introduction. Uh, so I know Di in three ways. Number one, I used to babysit him, but that's not why he's here. Uh, number two, um, it's because he works for the Bible Society, a great organisation that helps people all around the world not only read the Bible, but find the Bible engaging and life-giving. But thirdly, he is a brilliant spoken word artist, um, and perhaps you've seen some of his videos online, they're brilliant. And so uh, Di's going to come now and do two uh, spoken word pieces for us. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, John. It's uh, great to be here with you this morning. And uh, how I know John is uh, we got kicked off a ride in Barry Island, didn't we, together? <laughs> so uh, it's great to be back. And I just want to share this poem with you about what Christmas is to me. And this is the real Christmas story. And it goes like this. Christmas trees, fairy lights and candles. All shining brightly in the night time with snowmen pictures on the mantle. Cliff Richard, Ali Jones, the great escape and festive garden gnomes. Mary Poppins, spoonful of sugar that makes the medicine go down. The unwrapped Xbox 360 brings a smile to a frown. Stuffed full with roasted parsnips and King Speech at three. Turkey and stuffing sandwiches with twiglets for your tea. <laughs> Chris, that's good that, isn't it? Christmas specials on the BBC, hence the family doth congregate and the kids are doing your nothing after an over-hyperactive state. Fifteen hours straight. And by now it's getting late. Clock ticks past twenty-five past nine and granddad's unconscious on the sofa after a few glasses of mulled wine. <laughs> and before you know it, the evening's nearly over. You call Grandad a taxi cab and Mum gets out the hoover and the kids are fast asleep and the 6am alarm clocks are set while Mum and Dad are out there dreaming about the Christmas monster, credit card debt. <laughs> and that's Christmas in a nutshell, in a way. I'm trying to think if there's anything I left, anything I missed out, anything I didn't say. Oh, how can I forget? I nearly missed the most crucial vital bit. Without it, Christmas wouldn't even be here to celebrate. Known to millions around the world. The story of one. More important than anything I mentioned before. More important than snow, reindeers, elves, or festive giving for the cause. One person made Christmas significant. The one and only Santa Claus. <laughs> no, hang on, it's not. Hang on, uh, no, hang on. That's, that's not right, is it? That's not, I might have got that wrong. I might have got, but don't chuck me out just yet, like when me and John were kicked out of Barry Island. <laughs> don't just yet, because for me, Christmas, there's one chord which ties Christmas together, and I kind of realised that a few years ago, and so if you go through the nativity scene, I kind of reintroduced this word chord, C-H-O-R-D, or C-O-R-D into the nativity story. And I'm wondering if you can just help me. When I say Christmas chord, I wonder if you can join in with me on chord. Christmas chord. Wonderful. It's like you prepped them, they were brilliant. I'm gonna do that and be really subtle so you know where to join in as well, okay. So I'm gonna ask Joel, um, or Joel, as I'm gonna call him this morning. Uh, Joel, I'll call him Joel. <laughs> to play the first slide and we're going to share this Christmas chord piece together. <clears throat> Let me tell you about my favourite story. It's all right, don't worry, it's not gory. It's the first Christmas story and not to be clever, but it's about this one chord which ties everything together. Not the chord to the fairy light on the Christmas tree. This story starts and might so picture the scene. Few blokes on a hill, tending their flock. Run of the mill stuff, you know, till they get quite a shock. See, this angel shows up and shines in glory. It's true, it's a true story. Whoa, says the angel, it's all right, no danger. Just thought I'd let you know this baby in a manger. It'll do you good to go visit if you're able. This one's special, you find him in a stable, a king. If you can, go see him. 
den, a moment they'll treasure throughout their days, when a whole host of angels sent up their praise, and in a... The guys agreed, yeah, count us in, count us in indeed. Cut new scene, more blokes, not shepherds, but intellectual sorts of guys with telescopes out studying the skies. They spot this particular star in the night. So the guys follow the star in the sky in the night. A month later, they arrive to see the birth of the Son of the Most High, born as royalty king, destined to be more than a baron or a sir. And so they brought him three gifts, gold, frankincense, myrrh. So humble to witness this significant scene, the wise men they knelt onto a knee. So tender, so mild, they all thought they born in Bethlehem, a uh, din to the prophets. Now, flip back to the beginning, we meet a guy called Joe, engaged, due to tie the knot with this Mary girl, but now he's not so sure. She's pregnant, not his. Why didn't she come clean? But then this angel shows up in his dream. Don't panic, says the angel. Things aren't what they seem. The big guy wants you on the parent and team. See, God's only son is living inside Mary. He's going to be born and he's going to save many. What the angel said, it struck a... Oh. It went in and Joe strived to obey God from there on in. Now, skip past the guys with their flock, you know, the ones in shock. Skip past the guys searching the skies and they're back in the stable. They cut his umbilical nature's cable all in awe a cord of worship the little guy in the cradle and this little guy is so vulnerable and so weak but destined to be king and they shall bow at his feet you see we sing carols with instrumental but it's got nothing to do with jolly old claws we sing to celebrate only one thing this one moment in history which changed everything and when we remember this little guy we remember he is son of the most high in a crib with straw in his face yet god's trump card against the sin of a broken race this is a story all about a about a little guy who was king and a sin he bore you see the chord which makes christmas is g sus Jesus, Jesus, thank you. Thank you so much, Di. We'll hear more from Di later on, but now we're going to have two songs from our choir. Brilliant, thank you so, so much for that.
Well, uh, this year we started a new carol concert. We hadn't tried one uh, before. Um, uh, Gwasanith Carolai i Dysgwyr Cymraeg. Um, and if you didn't understand that, you didn't miss out because it was for Welsh learners. But next year you could start learning, get some Duolingo and come along. It was a lovely evening uh, in the King's Arms. And one of the highlights of our Welsh learners carol service uh, was uh, Gwenan, who's on the harp. Uh, wonderful playing the harp and singing um, and so she's going to accompany us now um, with uh, the piano and the choir in singing a beautiful carol together so let's all stand and sing Silent Night. Well, that sounded wonderful, and you're all invited to join the choir next year. That was brilliant. Well, we're going to hear from the choir once again now, uh, before Di Woolridge comes and speaks to us, and they're going to sing a new version of um, an old classic. So listen in. Sweet baby Jesus, 
laid down his head the stars in the bright sky look down where he Sleep on the Good were they, so good. And Gwen, man, you, you were over there in the harp, and then you were singing a solo. Brilliant, wasn't it? Can we give these guys another round of applause? So good, so good. Brilliant. Uh, well, as, as Jonathan <laughs> mentions, my name is Di, and it's such a joy to be here in Abergavenny with you this morning. Um, my wife and I love Abergavenny. Um, and it's great to be out here, and I just love how my satnav affectionately calls your town a Burgavani, which is interesting <laughs> because it's such a classy place, Abergavenny, and he calls it a Burgavani. I don't know why, but uh, it's a joy to be out, and I know it's Christmas Eve, it's a busy season, and there's so many things to do that we've got to pop out here and there to get the last minute bits and bobs done for Christmas, but you're very welcome. Uh, to be here and um, I don't know about you but I've kind of got lots of bits and bobs to finish at Christmas still I'm still trying to frantically get everything sorted and so I'm popping out here there and everywhere right now and I don't know if you can relate but I kind of realized that there's different levels to going out there's different levels to going out and the wise sage prophet Mickey Flanagan once said uh, the comic once said that there's different levels and if you don't know them I'll, I'll talk you through them so first off it's Christmas it's a busy season right so you pop out to get your last minute bits and bobs right 
and then you end up bumping into someone and they say, do you want to go for a drink? And you say, well, I'm out, so why not? And you go out for a drink and you talk away the world's problems. Couple of hours pass, you're having a great time, you're still out, but it's okay, you're having a blast. Then what happens is the evening people come out, right? And these people are going properly out. They're going what we like to refer to as out, out. And the evening people, they got their Christmas jumpers, they're all dolled up, and the evening people come out to you and they say, are you coming out with us? And you say, no, I can't come out, out. I didn't even come out. I only popped out. And the evening people look at you and they think, that's not good enough. And they say, look, listen, listen to me now. Listen, 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 listen you now, listen you now. They say, you popped out. You ended up out. You might as well come out, out. <laughs> and you're thinking, well, it's Christmas, life's short. You're right, you look them square in the eye and you say, yes, I'm coming out, out. Five hours later, you're in some random karaoke bar singing the Pogues' fairy tale of New York, and you think you've got a crazy story to tell everyone. And you go up to every single person you rub shoulders with, and you say, hey, I didn't even come out. I only popped out. And now look at me, I'm out, out! And the reason you feel like you have to tell this very long-winded story is because you're standing there with your carpet slippers on, <laughs> holding a pint of milk in one hand and a bag of Brussels sprouts in the other. <laughs> Why am I telling you that story? That's a very good question. Very good question. How do people feel about Brussels sprouts, by the way? Hands up if you love Brussels sprouts. Okay. Hands up if you don't love Brussels sprouts. Yes. Brussels sprouts tend to divide the room, don't they? Brussels sprouts. Um, I mean, they do cause so much gas. If one person eats them, everyone else leaves the room, don't they? Because when those little pockets of gas pop out, out, everyone else ends up passed out. <laughs> but we know you're talking about Brussels sprouts. They're thinking, who is this person Jonathan's, Jonathan's invited to a burger vani this morning? But guys, I love Brussels sprouts. Okay, I do enjoy them. I kind of judge them up a bit. Do you do that? Do you judge them up? Kind of, you know, a bit of pancetta. It's a fancy word for bacon lardons. And some cashew nuts as well. I throw it in. I disguise the Brussels sprouts. And we enjoy them. I love them. And my wife, Kath, she really loves them. But that's not saying much when it comes to Kath, because she loves everything about Christmas. She loves... She, Kath's enthusiasm with Christmas. It's, have, you seen, have you seen Elf? Have you seen Will Ferrell in the Elf? That's Kat's level of enthusiasm about anything to do with Christmas. I think Will Ferrell based his character on my lovely, wonderful wife, Kath. And um, there's this one scene in Elf where he finds out the special someone has come to visit. And this is how Elf responds. And I'm gonna ask Joel to play the video. Okay, people, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., Santa's coming to town. Santa! Oh, my God! Santa here? I know him. I know him. <laughs> That's cough. That's Gaff. She is so excitable and we can see, and I love that film, and we love that film because it's so much joy, right? It's so much excitement and enthusiasm, and I love it. He's so excited. Oh my God, Santa, I know him! And then we find out that it wasn't actually Santa in the random shopping mall in New York. It wasn't actually him, and it was a little bit of a disappointment. <laughs> it was a little bit of a letdown. And Christmas can be... A letdown sometimes. Sometimes it can be a letdown. And uh, I remember this one Christmas, I um, basically bought Kath penguins for Christmas. Not actual penguins, just to add that. But I did buy her penguins, plural, not singular. And um, it started off really well. Okay, it started off really well. She, unro she unwrapped these quirky little stocking fillers. And uh, don't get me wrong, the first 15 penguins went down the storm. Okay, she loved them, she loved them. But Kath was thinking this was the warmer back to the main show of, you know, actual, real, grown-up presence for actual grown-up adults. And, um, and the first 15 went down really well. It was the next 15, 115, that I started to think maybe I leaned a bit too close into the penguin-themed gifts 
at Christmas. And there was everything, all right? There was, there was penguin scissors, there was penguin pencil cases, staplers, onesies, slippers, you name it. If there was an item out there that was a novelty Christmas gift, mark my words, I hunted it down, I found it, I bought it, I gift wrapped it, and I put Kat's name tag on it, and I thought, yes, yeah, she's gonna love it. She didn't love it. She didn't love it. And, you know, we were on speaking terms a few hours later, you know, and we kind of, we reconciled. But I didn't smash Christmas that year. And so I've learned not to go so overboard on novelty Christmas presents. But the thing about Christmas is, is that sometimes it can be, sometimes we're like Elf and we're really excited, right? Other times it can be a little bit of a letdown and... Christmas is a little bit like a highlighter pen on life, right? When life is great and everything's going well, it lights up life in multicolour, and it's great. But sometimes Christmas can be tough. Maybe life has been weary, and it's been hard, and it's been tough. And it's all the weariness that's magnified, all the messiness that gets lit up in the neon highlighter pen. And, you know, when it comes to the first Christmas night, I bet that was a real highlight. While shepherds were out-out, watching their flocks by night. And these shepherds, they were rough around the edges. They didn't really fit in with society. They were kind of on the out-out skirts of society. And people didn't really know what to do with them. And they probably felt left out, out. They were the kind of people who wouldn't get invitations to parties. They were left out, out. But then we know this, how the story goes as they watched their flocks by night, all seated on the ground. An angel of the Lord came down and glory shone around. In Luke 2, Verses 10 and 11 put it like this. We've asked Joel to put up the next slide if we've got it. Is there another slide there? No, there's not. That's f oh, yes, here we are. Great. It says this. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And so you've got this incredible story in scripture where you see these people on the out outskirts, people who felt left out-out, these so-called nobodies, these rough-around-the-edges shepherds get one of the greatest messages this world has ever seen. And so these so-called nobodies receive this good news message, which means nobody has to be left out-out anymore. Nobody has to be left out doubt. Because those on the out outskirts, God invites in, in. I wonder how they felt when they had that message. They probably felt they've got it wrong. They, the sat nav that, is, that says, instead of saying Abba Kaven, he says Abba Gavani. The sat nav's got it wrong. Somehow they've gone to the wrong place. We're not the guys you're looking for. If you knew us, we're, we're not good enough to get a message like that. But what the shepherds didn't realise was it wasn't about how good they were. It wasn't about how good they were. It wasn't about the standards that they couldn't reach. Because if you feel like you just don't fit, if you feel like you're just not part of it, if you feel you don't deserve it, like you're just not worth it, shout out L'Oreal because he says you're worth it. Good news has come, let me tell you, he's worth it. A good news has not come because you're morally perfect. In fact, it's the opposite. It's not about how many boxes you tick. It's not about making the cut or get your name on the list, you. No, it's not about making grades on your performance review. Getting to the crux of it, it's not down to you. It's down to the one who came down for you, the one who gave up his crown for you. And Luke 2, 16 says this. After the angels sang and sounded beautiful like our incredible choir here this morning, they say, we've got to see for ourselves. we got to see for ourselves. Luke 2, 16 says, they go and they run, the shepherds run, and they get to the stable. And what do they see? They see something 
that someone 700 years earlier called that they would see. Isaiah, 700 years before shepherds watched their flocks by night. Isaiah called it. He predicted something unimaginable that one day a virgin will give birth to a son and would call him Emmanuel. Isaiah 7, 14. Emmanuel, which means God with us. And so there these rough round the edges shepherds are face to face with baby Jesus. And I wonder when the penny dropped. I wonder if the shepherds got the whole baby Jesus. I wonder if they were eyeballing him. And I wonder when the penny dropped as they looked into his eyes that they realized that this Ickle king of the crib wasn't just a baby, but he was savior of the whole world. Emmanuel, God with us. Not just a baby, not just sent from God, but God with us. Flesh and bones. Jesus is God. If it was me, I wouldn't feel like I could hold Jesus. If it was me, I'd I'd be like, you don't know me. You don't know what I've done. You don't know how I've messed up. I'm not good enough. You don't know. I, I can't. I'm not good enough. But that's the point of the Christmas story. Jesus is not afraid of our brokenness and our messiness. He's not afraid of what we've done wrong. He's not afraid of the messiness in this world. He came for our mess. That's the Christmas story And I just wonder, and I just reflect on, you know why we say there's different levels of out, right? I also think there's different levels of down. Because Jesus didn't just pop down. Jesus didn't just come down. Jesus came down, down. He came down, down into the messiness, into the brokenness. He came down, down for the down and outs. He came down, down for those who feel left out. He came down, down to gift us with the greatest gift this world has ever seen. A love that would move heaven and earth to rescue and repair us. A love that came from heaven to earth to show us love in its fullness. And do you know what happened next? Like when Elf found out about Santa and said, Oh my God, it's Santa! I know him! The shepherds go out and they can't help but tell anyone that they rub shoulders with, Oh, my God is Saviour. I know him. My God is Jesus. I know him. And it's not just an invitation to the shepherds. It's an invite 2,000 years later. It's not just an invite for me. Because the reality is I'm just a shepherd. And I'm just here to say, oh my God, it's Jesus. I know him. And I'm here asking the question, what about you this Christmas? Do you know him? Because he wants to know you. That's the Christmas story. My God came down, down, so I could be fully known, known, loved, loved, forgiven, forgiven, and made new, new. And it's an open invite. Let's pray. God, we thank you for Christmas. We thank you for family. We thank you for friends. We thank you for the joy that comes with giving gifts to those we love. We thank you for eating together with others. And we also remember those who find Christmas hard. But we thank you this Christmas that Emmanuel means God with us. So we don't have to be alone. And may we be like the shepherds who know you and can't help but tell everybody who you are. 
this Christmas. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Di, thank you so much uh, for that. It's wonderful to know, isn't it, that each and every one of us can know God. You can even invite him into your heart today if you want to know him uh, this Christmas. But if you're thinking about this and you want to know more, um, we do do a course as a church called Christianity Explored. We're running it um, in January, um, and it's just a way to come together, to open up one of the lives of Jesus, a gospel, and to ask who was Jesus and who is he today? Uh, you won't be asked it read out loud or pray or anything like that it's just an opportunity uh, for you to look more if you are interested there are cards um, on the welcome desk um, but you don't have to wait for a course uh, just between you and God you can pray uh, even this day and um, but we're going to all join together now and sing a wonderful carol together let's stand and sing the first Noel
Well, thank you all so much for coming and making our Christmas service so special. A huge thank you to all of our choir and brass band and musicians and tech team and those making the lovely refreshments. Um, and whilst they're not here, all of those who've looked after the children uh, together. That's been uh, wonderful. Um, please stay around, enjoy the refreshments. If your children have gone to the party, please remember to pick them up. They're in your care now. That would be wonderful. But let's all join together and sing, We Wish You a Merry Christmas.